Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dancing Water. I'm Susan. I am so glad to be here to offer a Dancing Water practice today. Restorative yoga, nesting practice. We'll use props that you can find from anywhere around your house, and uh, but we will use them in such a way to really create support for your body. If you've not done restorative yoga before, just a reminder that restorative yoga is different than other kinds of yoga in that it is designed to be a way for the body, the nervous system to relax. So we put the body in poses and shapes with the kind of support that allows your parasympathetic nervous system to come online and let your sympathetic nervous system soften. So your fight or flight is the sympathetic nervous system. Many of us spend a lot of time during our lives in that uh, agitated state. This is a way of practicing down-regulating and letting your nervous system relax. Today we'll focus, we'll anchor our attention on paradox and how seemingly incompatible experiences can actually be held together. It is a way of expanding our um, uh, ability to see the connections between things that seem like they are opposites. Let's just start with our props so that we everybody has exactly what you need. Uh, begin with a soft surface. So if you've got a hardwood floor like I do, get um, something soft under you. Um, a couple of yoga mats, towels, blankets. I've got a carpet. Um, so just get make sure that your the surface underneath you is soft. And then here's what you need. Two firm pillows. You could also use some uh, big bath towels that are folded, um, but you need two of those. Not the squishy bed pillows, that you need something that has a little more oomph to it. One blanket, not, a, uh, you know, not too big a blanket, and I like to have something that's super soft that feels really good on my skin. Some kind of eye covering. I use a hand towel, you could use a t-shirt, a scarf, a bandana, even a, a, a little bit of a weighted eye pillow, but um, I'm recording this um, the very late spring, it's warm out, I like something that's not too heavy on my eyes. Then two um, bath towels. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you. Let's fold these together. So two bath towels. Folding them in the long way like this. And then in half so that they make a rectangle. And then you see your rectangle. You've got rough edges on one side and a, and a smooth edge on the other. Start on the rough edge and roll it into a log, like that, okay? So you've got a nice, firm log. <laughs> Using the props in, in restorative yoga is a way of taking care of your body, of creating support, Oh, I did that weird. Let's do it this way. Long way first. Long way first. And then in half. So as we are a little bit meticulous with the fold of our blankets and towels, what that does is it, um, it creates a nice smoothness for the body to relax into. And in restorative yoga, we stay in postures for longer than in other kinds of yoga. And that is when the body begins to notice irregularities and the surface underneath, and it becomes less relaxing. 
So a little anal retentiveness goes a long way <laughs> for restorative yoga. All right, so we've got our props all ready. And um, I also recommend having a cup of tea or some kind of cool drink or water that we can come to at the end of the practice to water our intention, to take the practice out into the rest of our lives. So, Paradox, I want to just uh, highlight a poem by Mark Nepo called Adrift. I'll just read you a couple of lines. Everything is beautiful and I am so sad. This is how the heart makes a duet of wonder and grief. So this is the invitation of this practice. It's to be holding apparent opposites in the fullness of our experience in this human life. So we'll play with this throughout. And let's begin with one of my favorite paradoxes in the body. So just bring yourself to standing with a nice wide stance. So feel your feet relax on the floor and begin to give your body a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a shake. And it doesn't have to look any particular way. You can shake one part at a time. You can shake out your whole body. But let the sensation of vibration travel through your body. This is something that we are not trained to do. But the paradox is that one great way to settle your body down is to shake it up. So give it a shake, give your legs a shake, your feet, your belly, your eyelashes, your shoulders, definitely your hands, you tend to hold a lot of tension there, shoulders, a couple more breaths, shaking, and then pause. And now notice, notice the sensation in your body. And then take your hands as if your skin was silky fur and smooth it out. As if you were a friend and just letting yourself feel the reassurance, it's okay. So just smoothing out. So smooth out the tops of your head, your face, your eyes, your neck, through the core of your body, your legs, Smoothing out, smoothing out your feet, your backs of your legs, as much of the back of your body as you can. Anything that feels good, just feel the smoothing out. As a way of moving into our practice, just noticing that a little bit of movement can help relax the mind and the body. So again, just pause and just notice the sensation in your body. And let's take our first pose. This is a reclined, some people call it a goddess pose. I'll call it a goddess pose today. So take your two pillows or a, you could, if you have a bolster, a, a yoga bolster, you could use that here. I like to use utterly non-yoga props to make it clear that you don't need anything special to do this practice. And then take your blanket and in a long rectangle, so you want to have it on your, on your bolster-like setup, and then have it a little bit um, higher where your head is going to be. And then take your two towel logs and put them on either side. They're going to support your knees. So take your tailbone on the floor, right on the edge of your pillows or your bolster, and take a deep breath in. Push your hands down. Inhale up. Look up. And then using your hands, support yourself rolling down onto your back. Oh, right away. It feels good. And then 
So you've got this folded blanket here that you can then adjust. You can roll it up so that your head is lifted so that your chin is down. And then take the soles of your feet together and put your towel logs right under your thighs or your knees so that your legs are supported. In yoga, this is called Baddha Konasana, which is a bound a pose, which means that the feet are together. And even if you have the flexibility to do that posture without the support underneath, I strongly recommend having something under your legs to allow your muscles, your connective tissue, and your nervous system to unwind. For some people, this just doesn't work for their legs. If that's the case for you, you're welcome just to let your legs go long in any angle, either straight out or out on the sides. Or, if that doesn't work, feet wide, knees in. So, checking the length of your back body and feel the support underneath you, the softness underneath you. And then check into your arms. I like to have mine down near my legs, but you may want them out to the side. You might even want them out like this. But you're not looking for a stretch. You're looking for the sensation of letting go, of softening, relaxing. So with that in mind, take a couple of deep breaths. And close your eyes or lower your gaze. You can also, hi Phoenix, you can also take your eye covering, which is another way of signaling your nervous system to let it unwind. Animals and children love restorative yoga. It is their natural state. So it doesn't matter what where Phoenix is in the house, but when she knows, somehow she knows that I'm getting on the floor to restore. She likes to come and practice with me. So here, take a couple deep breaths. And let your body be both heavy and light. Feel your bones heavy into the floor, into the support. Feel your breath expansive and light. Relaxing your jaw right at the hinge underneath your earlobe. Feel your lower teeth relax away from your upper teeth. And your tongue soften away from the roof of your mouth. Notice what your feet feel like. Whatever position they're in, notice what you feel through your feet. Notice your palms.
Take a breath into your eyes. Letting your eyes be both heavy, setting deep into the sockets, and light, receiving light and color and shape, whether they're closed or open, covered or not. Allowing your attention to alight like a butterfly into your belly. Feeling the sensation of your breath, however it impacts your belly. Noticing your ribs like pieces of driftwood, smooth and heavy and yet floating on your breath. Sinking and rising with every breath. Perhaps swallowing and licking your lips to relax your throat and neck. Feeling the weight of your skull, the globe of your head, both heavy supported and open, expansive, without tension or contraction at temples or forehead or scalp. Noticing that you can be both relaxed and aware. Relaxation doesn't mean numbing out or sleep, but that you can relax into sensation. Feeling texture, temperature, and weight on your skin, noticing any sounds that you hear in the space.
notice any fragrances, the smell of this moment. With that in mind, taking three more deep breaths in this pose, in this posture, in this shape. Taking them to about 80% of your capacity for breath. So no need to super stretch. Just take a nice, deep, even, smooth breath in and out. Just taking a little more air in than you would normally. Oh. Then we're going to basically stay right where we are and take our bodies into a twist. This is a diagonal twist that I love to do. So begin, if your feet are not already flat on the floor, use your hands, draw your knees up toward the ceiling, feet flat on the floor, and let your knees fall to the towel that is on the left side, even if you weren't using it before. So knees fall to the left and take the towel that was on the right and place it between your, um, your lower legs so that it supports both your ankle and your knee. So adjust that so that it works for you. You want your shoulders to be on the bolster just as they were before. But you may want to scoot your hips so that your hips are turned, giving this twist and then extending your right arm long and maybe extending your, left, your right leg long so that you feel a length. For me, it feels better, more easeful to find the diagonal between my right knee and my right fingertips. So you experiment. So give yourself the opportunity to fidget around and feel your variation on this that feels easeful and supported. Not overstretched or over efforting in any way. And then you can choose your eyes. Your eyes can look either toward your knees for the least intense up to the ceiling or you can give a little more of a twist by turning your head away from your knees. Notice the sensation through your chest and your collarbones. Just noticing what you notice in those areas. In particular, letting your breath fan open your ribs on the right side. Let your breath just do whatever it wants to do. There's no need to control it or make it any particular way. If you find yourself in a position that no longer feels comfortable, by all means, let yourself move again over and over into comfort.
Notice your thumbs on both hands. Thumbs can be a place that we hold tension. So allow yourself just to notice, pay attention. And see if you can't invite an unwinding through the root of your thumbs and your hands. And in your own time, just taking three deep breaths here. Feeling your ribs fanning open on one side and softening on the other. And as you're ready, making the transition part of the movement, part of the practice, slowly let your knees come up to center. Take the towel that was on the left side and move it to the right. And then let your knees fall to the right. So again, adjusting your props so that you feel, your legs feel supported, that you're not gripping or holding in any way. Let your shoulders melt down. And you can play with extending your left hand long and either extending your left leg or just finding the diagonal from your left knee to right thumb, I mean to left thumb. Same holds true for your head. You're welcome to turn nose away from knees toward the ceiling or toward your knees. Feeling how your body can be both lengthening and folding at the same time. Notice what's happening in your hips. See if you're holding any tension in your inner thighs or your feet. Letting your eyebrows and eyelashes relax. Taking three more breaths on this side and perhaps inviting on the exhale some kind of audible sound, a hum, a vibration of some sort on the exhale.
And then let your left hand come over, rolling onto your right side, rolling off your bolster. And then gently use your top hand to push down into the floor and slowly let yourself come to alignment. Letting yourself find your upright. Taking your time, seeing how slowly you can go as we take ourselves to our next posture. If you're like me, my towel rolls have come unrolled a little bit. So perhaps roll those up again before you place them up on the top third of your space. Another great thing about using these towel logs is that if you need less height, you can unroll them a little so that your body is supported in a way that works really great for you. Then, again, moving very slowly, take your blanket and make it into a square. So folding it like this and putting it at the bottom of your space. Your two, blank, uh, two pillows and here, where, here, this is actually better for me than a bolster in that I can create some space between these two uh, supports so that my body can be supported in a different way than if it was all one, one level. So tops of the feet, we're going to do prone mountain brook. So tops of the feet are going to go on the blanket, hips, on the pillow, and head on the pillow. So, knees can go in between, chest can go in between. Then taking the towel logs and tucking them underneath your shoulders. Now for some people, they don't, the, the, the support under the shoulders isn't necessary. For me, if I do that, it just doesn't feel comfortable. And I feel overstretched and like I'm holding myself up. So make a choice that feels good for you. Again, you could unroll your towel logs a little bit if you need less support. But just get them in such a way that they feel good. Another possibility is having them out at an angle a little bit so that your upper arm bone can rest on them. Yeah, just play around and feel what feels right. And let one cheek rest on the pillow by your head. Your hips now are supported. So your belly is in the space in between the two pillows and your knees are in the space between the blanket and the pillows. Imagine that all of the props are stones, smooth stones in the river, and your body is water moving over the stones. Ebbs and flows of breath, flowing and swirling like a river over the props. Mm. 
Notice how your breath moves differently when your belly is down. Like a broad, smooth stone. Feel your sacrum, your lowest back, spread open and fan out with every breath. Like two pools of water, let your arches of your feet spread and flow. Let the palms of your hands pool up. Let your hips sink heavy into the pillow. Let your shoulder blades float light like two broad leaves floating on the surface of the river. Very gently, very slowly, lift your head and turn your head to the other side. Letting your opposite ear rest on the floor, on the pillow. Feeling the other side of your neck, get a very gentle unwinding. Upper arm bones sink down heavy into the floor. Lower arms like hollow bones and birds, let them float. Ask yourself, where can I get heavier? And where can I get lighter? Tips of your fingers tips of your toes, tip of your nose.
and taking just a couple more deep, full, even, smooth breaths. From here, again, very slowly, move the towel logs away from your body. Take your hands right under your shoulders. And slowly, very slowly, push down. Take your top pillow, put it off to the side. And come over onto your back. We're going to take a very brief Shavasana, final resting pose. Now you can do this with or without props. I like to have something under my knees. But some people prefer to have nothing and just rest on the floor. And I actually am also going to take very small support under my head. This is also a great place for an eye covering. Even if the room that you're in is relatively dark, a little bit of support on your eyes relaxes the nervous system. Coming back to the sensation, the paradox of heavy and light. Relaxed yet aware. Grounded and yet expansive. Feeling these apparently contradictory, opposing sensations simultaneously experienced in the body. This is the fullness of living. I'm going to invite you to stay in the Shavasana as long as you like. You can pause the recording or just let it play out. Sharing with you Adrift by Mark Nepo. Everything is beautiful, and I am so sad. This is how the heart makes a duet of wonder and grief. The light spraying through the lace of the fern is as delicate as the fibers of memory forming their web around the knot in my throat. The breeze makes the birds move from branch to branch as this ache makes me look for those I've lost in the next room, in the next song, in the laugh of the, laugh of the next stranger. In the very center, under it all, what we have that no one can take away and all that we've lost face each other. It is there that I'm adrift, feeling punctured by a loneliness that exists inside everything. I am so sad, and everything is beautiful. Friend, whenever you're ready, Transition back to a seated position. 
can keep your eyes closed, but do it again with softness and gentleness. If you have it, tea or water. Acknowledging the gift that you have given, not just to yourself, but to everyone you interact with in whatever form. Your choice to give yourself this unwinding, this paradoxical, relaxing, spreads out. It impacts not just you, but ripples out. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Thank you for taking this time for yourself. It makes a difference. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share videos liberally. I have set up this channel so that these practices of love and care can be shared with anybody who needs them, no matter where they are or what their circumstances. You can also find me at my blog at focuspocusnow.com or at my website, susanmccully.com. I always love to hear from you. So send me a note. Let me know how I can help more. Thank you so much, friends. Mm. Have a wonderful day. Take care of you. Mwah.